On today's Maker Mashup, we're going to use this little microcontroller to expand the functionality of our SKR board. So today we're going to use this small microcontroller which runs an ESP8266 and we're going to use that to control and send signals to our SKR board on our 3D printer. What we're going to do then is that will send serial signals across to it and it will allow us to expand our 3D printer for any number of inputs. So you're saying to yourself, why do I need additional inputs to my 3D printer? A few examples would be buttons to automatically home. So a hardware button where you're not having to navigate through menus. Another example might be a preheat button. The nice thing about this is it's completely programmable. And the way that we're using it is we're going to be talking serially. So through the RX and TX pins on this board to the SKR board, which also has serial pins for send and receive or RX and TX. So one of the really cool things with this is that you get so much flexibility. So the ESP8266 is really just a microcontroller and it works just like an Arduino. So if you've used that in the past for doing anything like turning on LEDs or turning off LEDs, you can do that with this and talk to your 3D printer. So for an example, this serial cable that we're going to use is going to communicate to and from the printer. And what it's going to do is it's going to send those signals and send commands and ask for replies. So the same way that in, let's say, the terminal window of Octoprint, you type an M command or some other G code command, you'll be able to send those commands with this microcontroller and you'll be able to receive them as well. So you can ask the 3D printer or your SKR board, what's the temperature of the printer? And then control LEDs that say, hey, it's at a cool temperature or it's warming up. You can actually control a digital display with this and then have a display that shows the temperature or a seven segment LED that's very large that shows the temperature. There's a lot of different functionality for it. The idea here behind this project that we're gonna do today is really to inspire you. So to make all this work today, we're going to have to do a few things. First, we're going to have to solder some connectors onto this board. These come without connectors often. Then we're going to have to build ourselves a little breakout board. And I have the link for this in the description as well. These breakout boards are really handy for doing your own sort of prototyping or development and uh, they're fairly inexpensive. The other thing that we're gonna need today is going to be one of these serial cables. So this is just four pins and we're gonna need these four pins for communicating to the SKR board from the ESP8266. Another thing we're gonna need with this is gonna be one of these hardware buttons. This is so that way when we press this, it will actually home. In this example, I'm gonna show you just basic functionality on how to make this work and how to just have a hardware button home the printer but there's tons of expansion that you can do with this so let's get to work the first step is going to be for us to solder our shield for the wemos and then once that's done we're going to program the wemos with our code that will home the printer and then after that we're going to need to burn a new copy of the marlin firmware onto the skr board after we've enabled the second serial port option this is the schematic of what we're going to be building as you can see here the wemos really is just connected to the shield directly and then we're just simply copying the pins over we've got the rx and tx which flip around and you can see the pins on the header there. The three is the TX for the SKR board. And then the four is the RX on the SKR board, which is the RX and TX uh, respectively on the WeMOS. The first step is to solder leads onto a button. Then we're gonna wanna assemble the breakout board. Once the board is assembled, do a quick test fit to make sure that it's functioning before you add the header pins and do the rest of the soldering. Now you're going to want to solder in the header pins. You can see here that those face a different direction from the pins that are actually going into the D1. Then the rest of it is pretty simple. 
you're going to wire up the ground wire to the ground wire, uh, the 5 volt line to 5 volt, and then the RX and TX lines from the WeMOS D1 go to the TX and RX lines, so they cross over. This crossover is what allows the WeMOS to communicate with the SKR over the serial port. So swapping the RX and TX lines across the two devices allows them to communicate. Refer to the schematic earlier in the video if you need help and feel free to reach out to our Discord where we can help you answer any questions on this as well. The last part is just making a quick test fit to make sure everything lines up. You're just going to want to put your breakout board on top of the WeMOS D1 and then grab your serial cable and plug that in just to make sure all the connections fit. If everything works right, then let's move on to the programming in the Arduino IDE. The code for this is pretty simple. Up here at the top, I define the main variables that we're going to use within the program. This sets the home command to G28, which is the G code for that. This sets the pin that is the hardware pin that we're going to be using. And the next one is the baud rate. And we'll cover that in a little bit in detail when we look at the Marlin piece. But that baud rate is the same as what you set up in Marlin. You can see here we use just a standard serial command. So it's just the same serial as if you were debugging. And then we set our input pin as a pull-up pin. Then after that, we're going to send some empty line just to make sure we clear out our buffer. And then the rest of this is simple. We look for a button press. And then if we do, we send the home command. And then we wait three seconds to make sure that the command isn't sent more than once. Now just click the arrow at the top and load this onto your WeMOS. Now we just need to make one simple change from within the configuration H in Marlin 2.0. You're going to want to find this section here that says serial port. And then once you go to that section, you're going to want to enable serial port 2. And you'll see the first one is set for negative 1. This one would be set for 0. The default is always negative 1 for the first one. And that is your USB connection. Uh, the next thing you want to confirm is the baud rate, and this should be the same as what's in the Arduino, in this case 115200. Once that's done, compile this and update your Marlin firmware to this version of your code. Last step, now that you've got your board updated with the latest firmware, is to connect the serial cable. You can see here that on the SKR board there is an AUX1 pin and it has a 5 volt, a ground, a TX, and an RX. Going back to our original diagram, you can see pin 1 and 2 match for 5 volt and ground. Pin 3 is TX, but on the Wii MOS that's RX. And then pin 4, which is RX, is TX on the Wii MOS. So we should be ready to plug this in and test it out. Now just take your serial cable and plug that into the headers on your Wii MOS. And if you haven't already, go ahead and plug your button into the D5 pin and ground, which is what we'll use to trigger the home. Now let's plug in our serial cable, being very mindful of the colors. As you can see here, I used black and red so I could actually see what pins were the power and ground. Plug that in and then let's give it a test. So pressing the button, you can see here that our printer is homing and we have a successful project. Now, I did this project with the SKR, but looking on the internet, I also ran across this project here, which uses the Melzi board inside of an Ender 3. So you could expand an Ender 3 just the same way that you can expand an SKR. When working on this, I also ran into this ESP3D project which allows you to apply an entire firmware to the ESP8266 to drive all sorts of displays and really do that unlimited expansion that I was talking about earlier in the video. So I suggest checking it out and there's a link for it in the description. This project looks a lot larger than the one that we did here today. 
So if you're not looking at doing something complex, then you can certainly expand upon the code that I gave you today inside this project. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you can post down in the description your comments. If you liked it, certainly give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you want to help support the channel, feel free to purchase one of the items on this project from the links in the description or you can also check out our Patreon where the, that directly helps support the channel and allows me to do more projects like this. So thanks again for hanging out and have yourselves a great day.